Uh, this is a short summary of the lesson uh, that we did on uh, binomial uh, distribution. So we have to remember uh, some key things about the binomial distribution. Um, in terms of language, uh, we'd be writing down that this is about a binomial distribution with a probability of success and a number of trials. So we need to uh, think about what this is telling us about. Well, to, do, to be able to deal with a binomial distribution, then there must only be two outcomes. So we talk about a probability P, uh, that's the probability of success. And we talk about a probability Q, which is the probability of failure. To have a binomial distribution, uh, the number of um, outcomes, again, it reiterate is to either have a success or a fail criteria. There must be a fixed number of trials n, so you can't just do this where the trials keep going on and on. There must be a fixed number of trials. The probabilities must be independent of each other, and um, they can't change throughout the experiment. So we need a, two outcomes, a fixed number of trials, and the probabilities are independent, and they don't change throughout the trials. So when this question says, um, for each of the following state, whether or not the binomial distribution might be a suitable model, we've got to kind of check those conditions. Now A, the total score on two fair dice. The problem with that is the distribution of the total scores will go from 2, 3, 4, 5. So there are many outcomes. So therefore this one is not a binomial distribution straight away because the number of outcomes are not fixed at 2. So it's not binomial, um, too many outcomes. Uh, B, um, we're talking here about the number of heads on six coins when flipped. Well, this straight away looks like it might be binomial because there's only two outcomes. You either get a head or a tail. Um, you then check whether it's a fixed number of trials. Well, yep, six coins is fixed. And then you ask yourself, are the probabilities independent? Um, where the each time you toss a coin, it doesn't affect the probability of the next one. And yep, the probability of heads or tails doesn't change. It's 0 0.5 each time. So this will be binomial. Um, the number of pieces of butter toast that land butter side up if three pieces are dropped. Again, we ask the same kind of questions. Is there two probabilities here, success and fail? Uh, yep, it either lands butter side up or butter side down. Um, are the probabilities fixed? Yep. And well, we we have to assume they're fixed uh, because we're assuming we toss one piece of um, toast at a time so therefore it won't affect the probability of the next one and the next one and three pieces therefore it's a fixed number of trials so yeah binomial uh, the number of bus uh, the number of buses uh, passing a bus stop in one hour um, well if buses stick to the timetables so you'd hope that would be true that you'd have a fixed number of trials um, but however we don't know that because um, buses travel um, get stuck in traffic blah 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 so we haven't got a fixed number of um, outcomes um, it could be one bus, it could be two buses, it could be three buses, it could be four buses and so forth so this one is not binomial based simply because there's not a fixed number of outcomes so it's not binomial uh, the weight of five dice that are rolled, again, uh, we'd ask ourselves, um, is this um, fixed? Um, well, no, it's continuous data. Um, the weight of the dice could change. Um, it's th There could be anything. So it's not a fixed number for each dice. Uh, although the number of events is uh, fixed at five, um, the outcomes, uh, probabilities uh, could change. And it's not uh, discrete data. It's continuous data. So that fails, so it's not binomial. Uh, F, um, the number of threes scored on five dice that are rolled. Well, the number of threes or not. So therefore it's got the two, uh, two criteria. It's either the probability of three, success, or not three, fail. So, yep, we've got uh, that condition met. Is there a fixed number of trials? Yep, five dice. And will the probabilities change as each dice is rolled? No, because we're assuming that each dice is fair. And once you roll one dice, it won't affect uh, the uh, probabilities of the next dice. So they are independent. So this one will be binomial. So let's have a look at um, how a question would work if you are asked to consider a binomial distribution. 
So we've got here a scenario where there's a gymnast. Uh, gymnast is going to perform four routines. So we've got a fixed number of trials. Um, it's telling us that there's a 70% chance of uh, performing without a mistake. So therefore, there's a 30% chance of him not performing uh, with a mistake. So oh, performing with a mistake. Sorry. Um, therefore, there's two probabilities. Um, probability of success is performing. So our p-value will be 70% or 0.7 and our q-value will be 0.3 so there's only two possible outcomes success, no mistakes, fail, a mistake and it's a fixed number of trials so we do have a binomial situation now as we've discussed in class when we get a binomial then we can work with the expansion of p plus q to the power of how many trials there are uh, we did do the practice but they're not going to expect you to multiply this out in an exam they actually give you the expansion already there so let's have a look at the question and see how it works so we find the probability that Kieran makes no mistakes in the competition um, so we're saying to ourselves that we want him to have no mistakes so that means first routine no mistakes, second routine, third routine so basically we're looking at this scenario that he's had a success in all four events so we're having to work out p to the power of four uh, so therefore that's going to be 0 0.7 to the power of 4 and that gives you an answer of 0 0.2401 so in other words there's roughly a 24% chance that he'll go through all four routines with a mistake so roughly one uh, in four events so if he goes to four competitions there's a chance he'll uh, there's, it, in those four competitions he will have one perfect no mistakes in all four routines for part B, it's asking, find the probability that he makes mistakes in exactly two. So we want exactly two of his routines to have mistakes and two to have no mistakes. So we're looking for P squared, that's the two events with no mistakes, and Q squared, two events with mistakes. So we're going to be using this term now for this one. So we've got 6P squared, Q squared. So that's going to be 6 times, uh, well P was 0 0.7 squared, times Q, which is 0 0.3 squared. And when we work that out, we end up with an answer of 0 0.2646. Again, in terms of interpretation, then that's roughly a 26.5% chance that he will make two mistakes in, his routine, in two of his routines. Exactly two mistakes. So for C... Uh, we look at the question, it says find the probability that he makes a mistake in more than two of his routines. Uh, the keywords there are more than, so it's more than two. So that really means he's made mistakes in three of his routines and he's made mistakes in four of his routines. So we're looking at this one here because Q, remember, is, uh, makes mistakes. So Q to the power of three is telling us it's, uh, where he's made three mistakes. Q to the power of four is made four mistakes. So we have to work out 4p cubed plus q to the power of 4. So we're having to do 4 times the p value times the q value cubed plus the q value to the power of 4. So we'll have a calculator. So 4 times 0 0.7 times 0 0.3 cubed plus 0 0.3 to the power of 4. So we get an answer of 0 .0, sorry, 0 0.0918. So just check that, because I think I might have pressed the calculator twice. So 4 times 0 0.7 times 0 0.3 to the power of 3 equals plus 0 0.3 to the power of 4. Press equals. Yep, I thought I had. So the actual answer should be 0 0.0837. So the probability that uh, he makes mistakes in more than two of his routines is 0.037, quite a small percentage, so roughly around 8% of the time. And for part D, um, what problems might there be in using the binomial distribution? Well, remember one of the key conditions of binomial is that the probabilities are independent and they won't change throughout the routines. So in here, we're assuming that even though if you have a mistake, it could knock your confidence, um, so it could affect it, we're assuming it doesn't. So for part D, what problem might there be? Well, we'd say that um, probabilities could change. So probabilities could change, uh, for example, 
um, mistake in one routine may knock confidence. So p value could change for the next routine. Okay, so that's a quick uh, review of the lesson on uh, binomial distribution. Um, remember the key ideas here that the binomial distribution is for a fixed number of trials, so four routines in this case. There are only two um, probabilities, it's either a success probability or a fail probability, and we assume that each time the trials take place, then the probabilities remain fixed. Binomial distribution.